Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're looking at iterables in Python. In the last video, we looked at iterators. So what in the heck is an iterable? Well, an iterable is an object that has an iter method or an iter method. So something that looks like this. Once you define this method in any object, that is now an iterable. So let's define something here. Let's define a first hundred iterable. This first hundred iterable just is going to define this iter or iter method. And this iter method tells Python that you want to be able to iterate over this iterable, like in a for loop, or you want to do some of it, or you want to turn it into a list. What does it have to return? It has to return an iterator. So return first hundred generator. Now you can do something like print the sum of first hundred iterable. And it will like it. And it will tell you 4,150. You can also iterate over it using a for loop, and it will be fine. It will also give you all the numbers there. So that's what makes an iterable. Nothing magical doesn't have to do anything contrived for Python. For it to become an iterable, all you have to do is define this method. And that method has to return something that you can call next on. It has to return an iterator. All generators are iterators, so of course this can be a generator. Now, if you want to make this a bit simpler, which you can do, instead of having a separate class returning the first hundred iterator, you can ask yourself, there's this iter method here that is returning an object of this type. What is first hundred generator in the context of this class? This is a pretty vague question, but I would say it is self. Self is always the current object, and what you're doing here is you're returning an object. So surely you can do this. Now you no longer need this first hundred iterable, and you can just return first hundred generator here. And I will still like it now. Now your generator is a bit more confusing because it's both an iterator and an iterable. And that can be confusing in some cases, but it can really be really handy in others because it's, it's much shorter than having a separate class to do that for you. Again, the iterable returned an iterator using this iter method. So you can do that from the iterator itself as well, since self is always an iterator, because self is the object that has this dunder next method. So I mentioned much earlier in the course something about for loops and how we needed an object that had dunder len and dunder get item defined. So what's that about? Let's define another, another iterable. And it's going to have a len, a len of self.cars, and I'm going to initialize cars up here. So let's say we've got self.cars is equal to this two element list. Then we define a dunder len method, which returns the length of the list. And we also define a get item method, which takes in the index that we want to retrieve and just return self.cars i. Earlier on in the course, we looked at this and I said that when you have an object that looks like this, that has the len and the get item method, you can use a for loop on it. And indeed, if we do for car, wait, for car in another iterable, you'll see that this prints out the cars, Fiesta and Focus. So is this an iterable too? It doesn't have an iter method. It doesn't return any generator. And the answer is yes. In Python, you can have your iterables defined either with an iter method that returns an iterable 
or you can have an object that has a length and a get item. Both of these are iterables, and you can use for loops, you can use sum, you can use len in them. Uh, sorry, not len, you can use um, uh, list in them. So both of these things are iterables. Okay. And now we've learned a bit about iterables, how they're different from iterators, but they are normally together hand in hand. An iterator is used to get the next value, and an iterable is used to go over all the values of an iterator. So an iterator sort of lets you go more step by step in case you want to do that by calling next. And iterable lets you go over all of the elements. So that's it for this video. If it doesn't make much sense and you're wondering, well, why the hell am I going to need this? Don't worry. In a few sections time, you're going to be like, oh my god, this makes so much sense as we learn about asynchronous Python. I'm just giving you a few hints here. And also, when you want to use or, or go over a list that is a bit longer, you can use generators to do that. Now, let me also say, now that we're here, that... Instead of having my numbers equal x for x in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example, this is a list comprehension. My numbers gen, you can do a generator comprehension. And this, this instance is not very, very useful. But this is now a generator object as well, which is just a shorthand for iterating over a sequence. You can do next of my numbers gen. You can print it out. Uh, so generator comprehension, a pretty popular thing to do as well. Notice the one printed out there. Um, so I just wanted to mention that this is not a tuple comprehension. This is a generator comprehension. And we can use it to create a generator object on the fly. And let's just call next uh, in this syntax as well. Again, all it does is go over this list and yield each number as you call next. So it doesn't copy the entire list, which this does. This copies the list and gives you another copy. This lets you go over it one by one without copying the entire list. Of course, this example is not very good. You could just iterate over this list since you've already got it there. But it can be useful in other cases, like when you're iterating over another generator and you want to make some changes to it on the fly. So. Uh, can be useful in some cases. We will encounter more examples of this later on. I just wanted to give you a bit of the syntax. Anyway, that's it for this video. Don't want to keep you any longer. I'll see you on the next one.